in the early 80s, the push for more stealth technology eventually resulted in the culmination of a ship. A very unique ship. A very dark, shadowy ship. The edgiest ship, if you will. Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains so edgy. And today, we are going to discuss the Sea Shadow. One of my favorite ships ever built. Very unconventional, but very cool. And its story is not super long, but still rather interesting. And there's a lot of misunderstandings and rumors about the ship that, uh, well, I want to correct because people don't necessarily understand what she was for and what she was really doing. This is the story of the Navy's stealth ship, the Sea. Shadow. Sea Shadow, otherwise designated IX-529, was an experimental stealth ship that was built by Lockheed Martin for the United States Navy. Now, Lockheed is mostly known for their aircraft, but they did have a shipyard at one point, Lockheed Shipbuilding and Construction Company. And in the early 80s, the head of Lockheed's famous secret projects department, otherwise known as Skunk Works, Ben Rich, thought about the idea of applying stealth technology to a submarine. This was based on his own work with the F-117 stealth jet, which I'm not sure needs any introduction. It's one of the most recognizable military aircraft ever, and those planes were a groundbreaking technical achievement. They had successfully developed an aircraft that could be flown and be invisible from radar detection. True stealth capability. Rich thought that applying that to a submarine would also be highly beneficial, and it's easy to see why. Prior to the F-117, the only really successful stealth quote-unquote, military vehicle, were submarines. Now, submarines weren't invisible, necessarily. They could be detected, but especially in the early days, it was a lot harder than, well, surface ships. Subs were underneath the water. But Modern Tech had made detecting subs a lot easier, but what if they applied what they had learned with the F-117 to a sub? But initially, the Department of Defense actually wasn't interested they didn't think it was necessary to make a stealth sub, but Rich really genuinely believed that this tech could work and should be applied. Just because the DoD was initially saying no, didn't mean that they wouldn't say yes when they saw the concept in action. So he managed to obtain a contract with DARPA to develop stealth concepts and materials for surface vessels, a ship on top of the water. This was easier to develop, so therefore not as expensive, and it would help demonstrate the tech for naval applications. If he could show them that this could work on the ocean, then applying it to a sub would be the next logical step. And so the Sea Shadow was slowly pieced together, but they had a lot of early problems with her, as these ambitious ideas tend to have, but they were very silly in some applications. One wasn't foreseen. Initially, the wake she left as she moved over the water, was actually so large that it could be detected by radar, which defeated the purpose of her being stealth, because, I mean, yeah, they couldn't see her, but they could see where she had been. They had to fix that, which they did. But another problem, and a much sillier one, was apparently when she was built, they put her propellers on backwards? I don't even show how you did that, but they did. That was fixed too and she was finally finished in 1984. Looking at her completed design, you can see the F-117's influence here. Her appearance is bizarre, and pretty much unlike any other naval ship before or since the Sea Shadow. She looked very alien, but again, much like the 117, so it seems to track pretty well. Part of her perplexing appearance had to do with her hull form, which was a swath design. That stands for Small Water Area Twin Hull. 
basically, she had two separate larger hulls that sat underneath the water that each had their own propeller, aft stabilizer, and inboard hydrofoil. The point of this was to maintain stability and to increase speed without necessarily increasing wake while moving. The upper hull was where the crew remained, and she only had a complement of four. It was at no point meant to actually be put into service necessarily. She was strictly only a test bed for the technologies. And this is where rumors circulate. Any kind of these experimental projects of the modern day lead to conspiracy theories. No, I know what they're really doing. Look at that ship, it's obviously evil, and they're up to something like testing alien technologies. Ah, which is all ridiculous. Stop saying that. You sound insane. The technologies that went into this craft are strictly human because we are not idiots and we do develop things on our own. Magic. And she was never meant for any kind of mission parameters when it came to doing anything other than testing the technology. Only testing. Always. Forever. That's all she was ever meant to do. To the point that she was never even commissioned by the Navy, though she did appear on the Naval Register because... She was a Navy ship, but she was never meant to be mission ready, and she never even had any weapons at all. They never tested any kind of weapons with her because they didn't need to. That's not what she was meant to do. She was actually also a top secret project for many years, nearly a decade in fact, as she was assembled in a floating hangar in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is known as the Hughes Mining Barge, or HMB-1. She hid there, obscured from public view, like a supervillain's lair or something, which again only adds to her mystique, but this was because the tech was still fairly new and considered top secret. And all testing that took place happened at night, where she couldn't really be seen, and of course, even detected, because she was a successful stealth craft. She did manage to hide her radar signature when she started trials in 1985, Though she never carried any armaments, they did want to add a radar set to her to be utilized for perhaps scouting missions if the need arose. And work on that modification did begin, but that element of the project was cut short. She was actually revealed to the public when she was also retired. That was after the Cold War was over, so they weren't really worried about Soviets anymore. And they didn't really see a need to make another ship like the Sea Shadow. It wasn't so much that she was bad. She did work and do what she was supposed to do, but she didn't have that many military applications. At least not where the Navy was concerned at the time. An actual ship with her particular parameters all rolled into one package wasn't something they had a need for. She didn't do much of anything beyond move around and be stealthy. Which, great, but modern naval ships are pretty complicated. Plus, Navy ships needed to carry a lot, and that's an issue with swath designs. They have much higher sensitivities to being loaded, which would bring the bridge even closer to the water. And many modern Navy ships are so well equipped to defend themselves against attacks by aircraft or anything else, that hiding just didn't seem necessary for them. But, to be fair to the Sea Shadow, much of her tech was eventually added to other designs. A lot of the stealth tech can be seen in modern ships, and the USNS Impeccable and the USNS Victorious, which are ocean surveillance ships, did actually inherit her stabilizer and canard methods to help perform their stability-sensitive intelligence collection missions. And some modern destroyers, like the Zumwalt class, do have stealth capabilities. So it's not like the Sea Shadow was a waste of time, as she did test out these technologies, and they were considered good enough to implement in some capacities but again, just not with her particular design. But what happened to her then? She is one of the coolest looking ships ever built, in my opinion. She just drips with style and, frankly, edginess. But sadly, she's no longer around. She was officially out of service by September of 2006, continually maintained by Lockheed Martin until that time. After that, both her and HMB-1 were actually made available for donation to a maritime museum, which sounds great! These would be wonderful pieces to add to any collection. Nobody was interested. I mean, really, nobody. Not a single soul. No one said, yes, we would like the amazingly cool stealth ship. Are you kidding me? Do you think people wouldn't want to come see this? Really? 
Well, after that, the US Navy tried to sell her to the highest bidder, thinking that perhaps another military somewhere on the planet might want to test her. Maybe an ally like the UK, anybody, somebody else. Maybe even a private billionaire, which if I was, I would have bought her. Like everyone else has got these fancy yachts, but you roll up in a sea shadow. Look, if you gotta flex your money, do it the right way. I'm just saying. But again, there was nobody interested in her. And then after that, they finally listed her for sale again, but this time specifically for scrap. And she was sold in 2012 and dismantled that same year by Bay Ship and Yacht Company. She's gone. It's a really sad end for her because look, look guys, she's just so cool. I know she's not like the other ships in the military because she never did anything heroic or anything combat related. She was just a test platform, but she just looks so cool. And just imagine just being able to cruise around in a ship like her. Just like, hey guys, what do you got? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, check mine out. Like, that's the ultimate flex, but no, we were robbed. We were robbed. And now, she's gone. Faded into the abyss and disappearing in the shadows. Becoming one with them, just like she was always meant to. Edgy! And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Brian, Jack Carson's Road Videos, Hayden DeGro, Master of None, Lord Hoff444, The Baxter, That Guy with a Beard, Mark Holding, Lock Crack, and Murder Drone Stall, A Person723, DM Trouble Typhoon, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Alfonso Lapuche, Royal Hudson2860, Icerfer1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matthew Wolf, Dr. Racer78, Ohio Trucker1, Mr. Sleepy Matt Weaver, Alaric Jaspers, Tom Red Lion, and NS Productions, 8104. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.